2001, and I was trying to get as far away as I could from oil development to try to find clean water to drink and fish to eat. This area is a giant wetlands. You certainly notice when you're hiking through it. That's because this area is underlaid with permafrost. They used to call that permanently frozen ground, and that that frozen ground holds that moisture up in the top layer, creating some of the largest wetlands in the world. But that permafrost is melting. And with that, we're losing the wetlands. Now, I have horrific blisters from backpacking through the wetlands. And the wetlands are why this area is just to the east of this area are the destination of 160 species of birds from six continents in all 50 states that go up to breed there. And does anyone know the other positive feedback? There are many positive feedbacks, but the positive feedback that is being caused by the melting permafrost. Methane. Methane. But as the, the uh, permafrost melts, the wetlands are drying out, and we are beginning to release that carbon, uh, more than a teraton of carbon, more than all the fossil fuels we've burned thus far. And unfortunately, as that carbon is released under lakes or under wetlands, it forms methane, which is 23 times more potent than carbon dioxide, uh, creating another massive positive feedback. In addition to all the fossil fuels we're pumping out and the other impacts like deforestation and livestock, which is a significant impact on climate change. Now, I was trying to raft as much as I could to try to keep from hiking through the wetlands that are very difficult to hike through. And I was trying to catch fish, but I didn't realize that the oil companies had pretty much destroyed the fisheries. And so I was getting very hungry, turned my attention to the edible plants. This is a woolly louse work that I dug out of the tundra. Didn't make the most flavorful of food and also had pink plume leaves and sour grass and uh, cotton grass seeds and thyroweed and willow shoots, other edible plants of the tundra. And this here shows my massive pack. This photo is taken at midnight. You can see the 24 hours sunlight and you can imagine all the sun's energy as it is now being absorbed by the Arctic when it used to mostly get reflected with few exceptions in the past. Now it's mostly getting absorbed by our planet. This is part of the central Arctic caribou herd staying far away from oil development. This herd averages about 25 times less when it uses areas that have been developed by the oil industry. And I too was starving because of the oil industry's destruction of the fisheries. As I went through these areas, I was very famished on the brink of death by starvation until I finally reached the Canning River border of the Great Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, border of the last 5% of the north uh, slope of Alaska not yet open to oil development. It was here I began to find some clean water to drink and fish to eat. That's a grayling that I caught in the deep pools in the Canning River. And occasionally, I would catch more fish than I could eat and would take the fillets with me using chunks of snow to keep them cool. These snow fields no longer exist in my last two expeditions to the Arctic in June when this photo was taken in 1991. And the tundra is just a chorus of life, literally hundreds of thousands of birds around it all the time, this Pacific loon. But another of the impacts of climate change is the forest line is moving north. Pretty much all species in our hemisphere are moving north to try to keep up with the changing climate. These trees are on the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge, and as the trees move north, they push out the tundra dwelling species. They, these species can't exist in a forested land. It allows predators to pounce on them when once they can see for miles and see the predators coming, and a lot of critically endangered birds are expected to go extinct. And the Arctic fox, too, uh, followed me for miles on the tundra. And however, I didn't admire them as much as they began to steal my fish. <laughs> and the Arctic fox, too, are being hammered by climate change. The red fox has moved 600 miles north in central Canada, according to the Pew Center on Climate Change. The red fox outcompetes the Arctic fox, pushing the Arctic fox towards extinction. And there's a moose and a thicket of willows hard to pick out in this photo, and moose too are recent newcomers to the north slope of Alaska. 
and this photo taken at one o'clock in the morning. I was trying to catch fish in this lake, unfortunately, with no luck. And the lakes in the Arctic are being very severely affected by climate change. They are drying out. The permafrost that once hold the, the water in is melting. These lakes are draining. In some parts of the Arctic, more than 50% of the lakes have already dried up. And this is now a very common site where there used to be lake and it's fast drying up. This, we're losing the fish, we're losing the habitat for tens of millions of ducks, and the native peoples critically depend on the fish to survive over the winter, and they simply don't know what they're going to do. And I was going up through the mountains, trying to find a pass through some of the tallest mountains in the Brooks Mountain Range. I didn't even know if this pass existed. There was very little information on what you can and can't do in the Arctic. And I uh, was going up Straight Creek, and went up, took a right up uh, Straight Creek, and took a left up an unnamed creek that I shared with very cold water, and came upon a waterfall that was not shown on the map, and I couldn't get past it with steep shale walls on both sides. So I had to backtrack and find a very steep tundra path, and this is looking back over the mountains I had just climbed through, and this is looking on the other side of the pass down at the Sadaluchit Valley, uh, which I went down and tried to catch fish through the a river that's down in the valley uh, with no luck. Went up and over another pass and came upon this Lake Schrader, these cabins that were built before the area was made a wilderness area. And I began catching these 10 pound lake trouts and having not been able to catch fish for uh, weeks at this point going through the mountains, I ate pounds and pounds and pounds of fish. And this is looking out over Lake Schrader and towards where I was uh, wanting to go. And as I began rafting, the winds whipped up. I didn't get very far in rafting on the first day. This is my birthday, uh, my 21st birthday at 1 o'clock in the morning. I had a great birthday present. Winds going in just the right direction. I could lie back in my raft and let the winds do the work for a change. And with my fishing rod out, caught this Arctic char. Arctic char breed in these lakes and swim down to the Arctic Ocean and grow much larger. These are very old fish that live more than 20 years old. And you can see Mount Chamberlain in the background. And like almost all glaciers globally, it is retreating very quickly. And this shows the global glacier mass and fast decline. This is in Glacier National Park. There was about 150 glaciers in 1850. There's down about 100 glaciers in 1900. We were at 33 glaciers eight years ago. We're now at 25 glaciers, expected to be the glacierless park as early as 2030. This is a photo taken in 1932, a major tourist attraction. People came from all over the world to walk into this boulder ice cave. This is the exact same spot in 1988. And the rate of warming has accelerated dramatically since 1988. The Portage Glacier retreating half a mile a year in southern Alaska, very dramatic changes being seen. As these glaciers on land melt, the water goes into the oceans, raising sea levels. Now, scientists are very alarmed now about sea level rise. A few years ago, they thought it would be relatively slow and something of a concern centuries from now. But what's happened is the melting in, glacier in Greenland has doubled in just the last five years. That what's happening is as the ice sheets melt, the ice sheets having by far the most of the world's frozen uh, water, being most of it in Antarctica, about 90%, about 8% in Greenland, they form big lakes on the surface the water's going down through moulons, into rivers, all the way to the bottom of these ice sheets, going under the ice sheets, lubricating the flow of the entire ice sheet into the ocean, and such that we are massively increasing the rate of melting and at an accelerating rate, such that sea level rise probably will be a major issue. Now, <laughs> while this is unquestionably a huge crisis, this past June, the Safe Climate Act, which would have at least begun the process of reducing emissions in our country, failed by a filibuster. And my big message today is we need this legislation on Barack Obama's desk on January 20th and not a day later. 